Howdy y'all, Trin here, and on today's episode, we're checking out Valshenki Cidery, one of the best cideries that I've ever been to, and a Swiss-inspired cidery. So we're gonna go in there, we're gonna talk to Kian, Kelly, and see a little bit about what they've got as far as the operation here, and why you should visit it. So let's check it out. All right, so I found him, the man, the myth, the legend. Ken, thank That's you me. for having me at this beautiful cider. <laughs> so you're gonna take us through and kind of show us a little bit about what you got to offer, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect, so we're starting here, we're in this beautiful uh, tap house right here. So what kind of inspired you to have this, uh, this kind of like openness, this, this very wood and like that almost rustic kind of feel to this place. Well, uh, the meaning of Valshanki is forest cavern. So what we wanted to do is kind of bring a little bit of the forest to an urban environment. And uh, the original Valshanki is pretty open. Awesome. You know, it's basically a small, uh, I don't want to say a shack, but it's like a tavern in the middle of the woods. And uh, in this case, it's an urban woods. But uh, yeah, we wanted to blow it up so everybody can kind of see each other and keep the airflow going nicely. and. Uh, somebody might recognize somebody on the other side of the bar and be like, hey guy, how's it going? Awesome. And we, we kind of like those vibes. Definitely. You guys got, how many taps do you guys got? 16. 16 taps. And then each of those is something that you guys have created yourselves? Everything is, we make in-house. Perfect, perfect. So let's go take a look at your uh, your uh, cidery and show me a little bit about what's going on here. No way. Let's do it. So here we are. This is where the magic happens, right? Yeah, it's a little bit of a mess because we had to pivot for COVID right now, but this is our 30 barrel fermentation tank and this is our two, or rather four unit tanks that we use for carbonating our cider. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's actually a nice nifty system, super efficient. We'll make everything in one tank, branch it off, and then add all our adjuncts and secondary, kind of like beer. Uh, very similar to beer, it's just our base sugar is a little different. We use apple juice so, or just raw cider. It's a, no one calls it just, Apple juice. <laughs> but, um, raw yeah. apples. <laughs> They're only the rawest. But, um, but yeah, our system is relatively small right now. You know, we have the ability to make multiple bases at once. So that allows us to have a lot of different flavors on tap at all times. Uh, we use four different house yeasts. Uh, two of our favorites right now actually is Kavik and an English ale. Um, you know, I think using multiple yeast for cider is pretty important to kind of build a different body and flavor profile for everything uh, you know as opposed to just using a champagne yeast uh, champagne yeast is super efficient but it also kind of burns off a lot of that apple flavor and that body that we're looking for this is uh, straight off the bright tank and this is the, not a complete fermented product but you can see that uh, as the process goes on and even though we make an unfiltered beverage it, it does take time to actually fall out and, and look like a finished product. Awesome. Uh, the color will change, the sugar will change, everything will change after it's done. There's a lot to explore with cider right now because there hasn't been any, really been minimal exploration for cider, awesome. uh, at least in Denver. So there's always something new. Yeah, but absolutely, always. Perfect. Well, I, I think you guys have an upstairs as well, right? What, what's right. up there? Absolutely, uh, we got a coffee house. So early this year, we actually launched our Bob Shanky Coffee House, which we exclusively partnered with Mad Loon Roasters, who is also a startup, uh, very much into social justice. He gives a lot of his profits to uh, social justice organizations around town and in the city. Uh, we have a full coffee bar oh, here, wow. using his brand. Oh, look so, at that. Um, Mad Loon is the brand, as I said. This is what he serves his beans in, which are growlers. So you can actually buy the beans here and then bring them back and we'll refill them for uh, sustainability purposes and give you a discount. So you guys got it all. You guys got cider, you guys got coffee, you oh, guys yeah. got tea. Double head espresso, we got Double. decaf available, teas. Um, yeah, this is uh, definitely more Kelly's domain. I'm still, I'm a humble cider maker, but man, put me in a barista situation and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our cider carton. Wow, uh, look at this that. Is, uh, temporary right now but everyone seems to be enjoying it and uh hopefully in the winter time we plan on putting fireplaces in potted planters and redoing the fence and really making this a nice homey spot definitely yeah. yeah it's nice out here too you guys got the shade you guys got nice distancing between the, the tables you got it you got it man it's uh 
we're, we're not getting fined. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, but yeah, we got hand sanitizer on all the tables, QR codes for touchless transaction and menu viewing. And uh, we have table service. Uh, it kind of allows us to keep that community response to how we want to engage our guests, as well as uh, efficiency. Uh, people aren't worried about COVID because they're worried about drinking good cider and hanging out. Have good sun, we got the sales, and like I said, distancing. You know, when yeah. you're not too worried about the uh, the bad things, you're worried about the good the good things. Exactly, you, you can kind of enjoy, yeah. right? Yeah. Look at the lead bound, Kelly. Kelly is the marketing genius behind everything that goes down here. Oh, you are. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about like your favorite ciders here. What, what should I be Ooh. trying? My One of my favorites, honestly, is the limoncello ginger. I know it's a lot of people's favorites. I also really like the prickly pear because it's like fluorescent pink and super juicy. Ah. Really good. I mean, it's hard to go wrong. It's beautiful and tasty. Exactly. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, we'll have to try those. Thanks again, Kelly, for hiring us. Yeah. Um, that uh, logo, is that something that like you kind of like helped develop? Um, kind of. Uh, a friend of mine um, who I've known since kindergarten went into graphic design and so the original lion on the flag where Ruth is from in Switzerland uh, was very like medieval looking. So we asked her to modernize it and she did a really good job because she put the little apple in the mouth and it's a little fun like trivia question we can ask people if they see the apple in the logo. And it looks really good and it's kind of paying homage to the original Val Thank you all, so kind of making it our own here in Denver. What do you got to say to anybody that hasn't been here before? Uh, you know, be prepared to be surprised. I mean, I think that cider has um, unfortunately kind of been in a status quo for a long time now. And I think that when you come here, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. It's going to be an adventure and you're going to probably find a lot about cider that you didn't know about. So, I mean, come enjoy, relax and uh, enjoy some good Swiss inspired cider. Sweet. With awesome. some solid Colorado roots, of course. Oh, and yeah. that's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> Keep it local yeah. and help out the people who are worth helping out, like this place right here. So come on down, check them out, and we'll see you next time <laughs> on the next episode of Trends in Town. Yeah. Take care, y'all.